Good morning. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. We hope you will join us in singing the hymns and acclamations, including the communion antiphon at the beginning of the communion procession. The text for the communion antiphon can be found just after the gospel reading in Breaking Bread. Welcome to all of you who are joining us through our live stream this morning. Please go to our website, www.setoncatholicchurch.org, to find a link to today's readings and a worship aid. Please join us in singing our prelude, which is of the Father's Love Begotten, which can be found on number 89, number 89. Please stand and join us in seeing ye watchers and ye holy ones, number 723, number 723.
morning, everyone. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, as we uh, move through our Easter season, uh, today we are observing what's known as Divine Mercy Sunday. This uh, celebration, this feast day, was put into place by Pope John Paul II some years ago, uh, based on the apparitions to Mother Faustina, Sister Faustina, who had a revelation pictured in the picture there of the Lord speaking to her, asking her to promote this belief that God is so merciful, all we need to do is call out to the Lord in His mercy, in His mercy He will answer us. So let us begin uh, by echoing that belief that the Lord is kind and merciful, and in His mercy let us ask Him to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, in the very recurrence of the Easter feast, you kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase the grace you have bestowed so that all of us may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. 
Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite our boys and girls forward now for their liturgy of the word. Are you bowing to me? Who are you bowing to me? Okay, but it's not to me, right? To him. How was Easter, everybody? Good? Good. What'd you do? Find Easter eggs. Find Easter eggs? What was in the Easter eggs? Money. Money. Oh, yeah. Can I come to your house next year? That's a golden egg. Golden egg? What was in the golden egg? Money. Oh, so it was usually candy in there? Yeah. What else did you do at Easter time? I found squishies. Found what? Squishies. Squishies? Okay. Yeah. No. What did you What did you do? Ate food. Ate food. How many of you ate food together? How many of you had people at your house? How many of you went somewhere else? Yeah. How many of you came to church? Let me close my eyes first. How many of you went to church at Easter? Okay, put your hands down now. So I won't judge you. Okay. You know, boys and girls, what is Easter about? No, that's Christmas. Jesus rose from the dead. Now, do you know Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to different people? He appeared to his apostles. He appeared to Mary Magdalene. He appeared to his mom. So many people Jesus appeared to. That's why we believe. Huh? Who's Jesus' mom? What's her name? Mary. Right? And so today you're going to hear a story how Jesus appeared to people, but there was one guy who wasn't there And when they told him, Jesus is alive, he said, I'll never believe it. Never believe it. Who was his name? What was his name? Yeah. Thomas. Thomas. So you're going to hear this story about Thomas, who did not believe. He doubted. But later you're going to hear Jesus appeared to him. And then he was different, right? Yes, sir. I got a silver dollar, Joe. You got a silver dollar. Okay, very nice. That's good. Okay, that goes right along with the story. Yeah. Okay, let's extend our hands towards them now, and you guys go out and learn, okay? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, 
for those who own property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ and is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father, loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord.
Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, Easter Sunday, I was scheduled for the 1130 Mass. So knowing how congested the traffic is in between Masses, I I came early in order to avoid the traffic. So I was in the sacristy before the earlier Mass ended, before the 930 Mass ended, and I heard the choir singing, Love is Alive, with so much spirit and energy and life. This was a children's choir, and they were incredible, each of them with a big smile on their face as they sang. This was what Easter joy was meant to look and sound like, and it was coming from these kids. And if there are any of the children here today that were in the choir last Sunday, I say, great job. I thought of when Jesus said to the people that in order to enter the kingdom of God, we have to become like little children. Their singing lifted me up and excitement ran all through me. So I stepped out of the door of the sacristy to watch a little bit closer these young singers belting out, Alleluia, he is alive, love is alive. And I got swept up in it and even sang with them the words that I knew. Well, some of them looked back to see who was this addition to their choir. (laughs) Someone with a deeper voice and who couldn't carry a tune. Their smiling faces were radiant as they sang with all of their soul. Love is alive. That made my Easter Sunday. 
and their singing resounded within me all day long. The message last Sunday revolved around the message that Jesus has risen from the dead, that he is alive. The message today is about whether we believe in the Easter message. So we have that familiar figure to show us that doubt exists even within one of his closest of the followers of Jesus, Thomas the Apostle, whom we call Doubting Thomas. He highlights the doubts about our faith, which are part of each one of us. The doubts which we harbor could be about so many things that we don't understand. But those doubts can lead us to strong and unswerving faith, just as Thomas's doubt led him to declare, my Lord and my God. Let's set the scene for what is playing out with the disciples after Jesus' resurrection. They have locked themselves away in a room with the doors barred for fear that they will be next to be treated in the same way that Jesus was treated. And their leader, Peter, knows that the authorities know who he is because of the people who questioned him about being a follower of Jesus as Jesus was being questioned by the high priest. Moreover, Peter and John had been to Jesus' tomb but could not find his body, and they did not understand what happened to the body. Mary Magdalene has come and told them that she encountered Jesus in the garden and spoke with him in the flesh. Two of the disciples who have been on their way to Emmaus come and tell them that they walked and talked with him and ate with him before all of a sudden he simply disappeared. What are they to make of all this? It's so confusing and incomprehensible. Did they also have doubts that Jesus had risen from the dead? So with all of their fears for their lives and the confusion and questions and tales of seeing and walking and talking with Jesus, the room is filled with tension and anxiety as they talk all of this over with each other, trying to make sense of what has happened. Realize that they did not yet understand what rise from the dead meant. We call Thomas as the doubting one, but can't we say that all of them had their own doubts? And then all of a sudden, this man stands in the midst of them and says, peace be with you. What? What is this, a ghost? And then the man says again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now they begin to understand. But more importantly, they now begin to believe because now they have seen and experienced the risen Christ for themselves. But Thomas is not there. And he makes a big deal about it. So much so that Jesus does his thing again just for his benefit. Don't you wish that Jesus would do his thing again just for you, just for me, so that we would have no doubt, but only belief that he is truly alive? But you see, belief is not belief without action. It's one thing to know about something, maybe even to understand. But belief is something much deeper and stronger. If we believe in something, then we will live our lives according to what it is that we believe in. Jesus, after appearing to his disciples and giving his peace to them, then sends them forth. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go and live your lives so that others may come to believe also. And he gives them the Holy Spirit to be with them 
to inspire them, to give them the words that they will need. Receive the Holy Spirit. He sends them out to act on what they know and believe. Through our baptism, confirmation, and receipt of the Eucharist, we are given the same commission as Jesus' disciples. Baptism brings us into the life of Christ. Confirmation imbues in us the Holy Spirit and all of his many gifts to enable us to carry out the will of God. And the body and blood of Christ nourishes and strengthens us with his own very life. That commission to us is just as real and as powerful as that given to those disciples in the upper room 2,000 years ago. God will not force us or compel us to respond to that mission. Nor does our response happen automatically or by some impetus from someone else. It is by expressing our love for God through our love for one another that we live out our belief in Jesus Christ. And we allow God, through his Holy Spirit, to guide us step by step, day by day. We all know this, but the doubts about our worthiness keep us from acting. There's a line from a Broadway play which states our problem. God never made a better woman than I am, but somehow I just can't seem to live up to it. Woman or man, our problem is to see in ourselves the uniquely beautiful person that God created us to be, and then to live up to it. Jesus and the scripture writers tell us repeatedly that God gives us the power to do it through his Holy Spirit. As St. Paul tells us, the fruits of the Spirit are peace and joy and patience and endurance and kindness, and generosity, and faith, and mildness, and chastity. How different our world would be if we would look at the world through the eyes of the Holy Spirit with peace, and joy, and patience, and kindness. When we live in the Spirit, those fruits come from within us to go out to others, and they are changed. They are not there for us to hoard or to hang on to, but to be given away. And in return, we will receive them back two and three times over. One of the tricky things about the Spirit, though, is that he moves where he wills not where we want or expect him to move. The Spirit is not under our control and is not bound by any limits we set. Rather, the Spirit invites us to discover his presence where we do not expect to find him and even where we may not wish to find him. Because of that, we may hesitate to follow the Spirit or have doubts about where he is leading us. But if we believe in Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, and that he has given us the Holy Spirit to be with us at all times, then we go in confidence to live out what we believe. Go in peace, Jesus tells us, and receive the Holy Spirit. He sends us forth to live our lives as he lived.
we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In his mercy, God raised his son Jesus from the dead. Let us call upon his mercy now as we pray for all people. For Christians throughout the world who celebrate the resurrection of Christ, that God may keep us safe and help us to be living witnesses of his love in this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Jesus may enlighten the minds and hearts of government leaders and enable them to bring peace and justice to every human being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that on this feast of divine mercy, each of us will strive to be instruments of Christ's compassion to all whom we meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the healing power of the risen Jesus may rest upon those who are sick, especially Terry Jackson, Dr. Richard O'Reilly, Carolyn Wolfe, and Shirley Bessenfelder. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Angel Villa, Cecily Bradley, Robert Anspa, Rogelio Fernandez Sr., that Christ, who conquered death, may welcome them to the eternal feast of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause to mention our personal intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have already granted us more than we can ask for in the resurrection of your Son. As you answer our prayers, make us ever more faithful to him, for he is the Lord forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare the gifts for the altar, please join us in singing, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 692, number 692. will be in 
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all. Accept, O Lord, these offerings of your people and of those you have brought to new birth in baptism so that renewed by professing your name, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this season, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with angels and saints sing the hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and again giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon this offering of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they passed from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray together as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all, forever and ever. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
in the breaking of the bread, number 355, number 355.
Just a few announcements to run by you before we do birthdays and anniversaries. First of all, the Knights of Columbus are hosting a special dinner in a week, and two weeks actually. And uh, Dennis here, member of the Knights, is going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Monsignor and Deacon Mike. We are very fortunate that uh, we have Luigi Rienzo as the former owner of Mama Tosca's, and he's a parishioner who joins us at 930 Mass, and he came to us and said, I want to do something as a fundraiser for the building fund, and uh, we kind of thought this thing out, and we're pre-selling tickets to 350. We've already sold over 200. This is going to be sold out today, so if you're wanting to do this, please, we're going to be in the back. It is in two Saturdays, the 20th, out on the patio, 6 o'clock. Um, it's going to be a great meal, great time for fellowship and just hanging around. Um, Ladies' Ministry Fellowship has stepped in as well because it became quickly apparent that this is more than the Knights can handle. <laughs> so I think that's it. So we look forward to seeing you in the back. And uh, thanks for this opportunity, and thank you to Luigi for saying yes to doing something new and fresh here at Seton. Thank you. Dennis, tell them what it is. You didn't talk about the food. <laughs> All right, pina pasta with a special, many of you may be aware that his mother passed away. Mama Tosca passed away recently, and so he's going to honor her with something special that he's going to prepare. Um, salad, ciabatta bread, spumoni ice cream, there's wine that can be purchased. Um, there'll be other drinks that are included in the meal, but uh, really a good opportunity to just spend some time. A little Italian singing in the background uh, by our very own Katie here and others. So it'll be a great evening. So thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah. Who cares about the fellowship? I want the food. Yes, all right. <laughs> all right. Tickets are $25. You could get them in the lobby after Mass. The table right next to them is the uh, Moms at Seas, who's uh, hosting, they're hosting that 5K run and walk, pancake breakfast. They have some raffle items you could buy some tickets for. That's going to be this Saturday morning. So you can either register or sign up for the breakfast or buy some raffle tickets there in the lobby as well. Thank you for your support of them. Next weekend, Deacon Noel will be uh, administering the blessing of a child within the womb. So after all Masses, any expectant parents are invited to stay after Mass, and Deacon Noel will be here to bless you for a safe um, pregnancy, a safe delivery, and all of God's blessings upon your unborn child. Okay? All right, April birthdays. Those who are celebrating birthdays this month, please stand up. April babies. Happy birthday this month, you guys. All right, you can have a seat. Anybody celebrating a birthday yesterday or today? On the weekend? Stay standing, stay standing. Anybody else? Birthday uh, yesterday or today? Happy birthday. Yesterday or today? Today. Today? today? Also, very good. Yesterday or today? Today, wow, three birthdays. I know there are more people don't stand up. That's okay. Let's sing happy birthday to them and everybody else. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Okay, those who are celebrating anniversaries of their wedding, 
in April. Stand up and stay standing. I'm going to go around and ask you how many years. Hold your applause until the very end. Okay, how many years, you guys? 17 years, very nice. 29 years. 25, good number there. 35 years, excellent. Am I missing anybody? Oh, yeah. 27 also, very good. 54 years right there. That's excellent. Where were you guys married? Where? Yeah, where was your wedding? Oh, in Delano. Okay, never mind. All right, I'm teasing. I'm teasing you. Okay, how many years? Twelve. Nice number. All right. Twenty years, you guys? Incredible. Wow. How many years? Twenty-nine years. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Happy anniversary to everybody. Oh, who did I miss? Oh, I'm sorry. Forty-seven years. All right. Happy anniversary. Not what? only is his hearing going, his eyesight's going too. I know. Well, these guy's wearing blue, and he was against a blue background too. So. Thought it was a ghost. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Weekend a week, everybody. Let's now stand and close in prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please join us in singing Join in the Dance, number 569, number 569.